a Blood Bowl Elf referee on the painting table today. I think this is video number 10 on the channel so far, so I hope you're enjoying the content I'm banging out so far. If you are, hit the subscribe button, comment below, all that kind of YouTube jazz. Um, definitely helps motivate me. My plan is to be putting a video out uh, every weekend, perhaps with you know two or three if I'm doing some small technique videos at some point. But that kind of subscription number going up and comments coming down definitely helps with uh, wanting to carry on and, and keep sharing what I'm doing and uh, seeing that you guys appreciate it certainly helps uh, myself. So look, no expert painter, um, I'm just someone that's done this hobby for a great number of years um, and it's about for me getting models on the table quick in an effective fashion uh, without driving yourself crazy but uh, that still looks nice so uh, hopefully that's what you're all after as well. So I've started off black spray like you'll have seen the rest of the Blood Bowl teams I've done started off a black base coat but with the referees I wanted a different tone uh, in how the final paint scheme comes up so I did Wraith Bone over the top of that. Now Wraith Bone looks white on the video here at the moment but it isn't you know it is quite an off-white colour but um, the camera is bringing it up as pure white you'll see later on when we stick the off-white colours and then the white colours on the top how actually off-white Wraith Bone is and it's important to start off for me white with a colour that isn't white because if you go straight from white you have a nightmare in trying to work out how on earth you're going to highlight it because how do you highlight white white's white um, and then putting shading on makes it look very mucky and whatever so um look this is just how, how i think feel free go from white if you like um you know go from black go from blue it's entirely up to yourself but this is just what i find um makes life a little bit easier now when i've done it i've undercut from about 45 degrees from above so that we get some of the black showing through as we go and it helps with the shading later on so they're not precious about second coat with doing that now we started off is a bad and black watered down with a bit of thinner medium you could use water that's absolutely fine but thinner medium which i think just gets more consistency then using a fine detail brush you can see there i've gone around uh, below the waist on the model and done equidistant thin lines around the model now you can see there i've got to the end and gone mm, not quite the same width the width that i want so i've just kind of drawn it in where i'm going to do it later on now you could just paint straight thick lines straight on at the width you want and work around that way however it's a bit messier uh, it's harder to get the lines correct and also if you make a mistake and decide you don't like it you've got big thick black lines to paint over so it's much more difficult in my opinion go around uh, divide it up with these thin lines and it gives you a quicker uh, and easier to follow effect because now I'm going back around with the same brush still using a thin brush and filling in the the lines in between uh, or the, the thick lines in between the guidelines that I've put down still using thin paint uh, we're not looking at full coverage at any any part here it's much better to go over with a couple of thin layers especially on a model you're starting off from white what we don't want is big thick clumps of paint going on the other beauty of using the wet palette uh, is that some of the pre watering work of, of what you're after doing is done for you and it will consistently keep being done for you um, and in fact if you leave it overnight or for two days it waters it down too much you have to chuck the paint away so um but much better for, for using and working for a couple of hours um on a model as you're going so we're filling in the sections between the guidelines now and you'll find as you go around because you're using watered paint it will dry out so you might want to revisit some sections whatever and i've now skipped a guideline you can see just going to do the last line first just to make sure in my head the replacement line that i put on definitely is in the right place i know you will make mistakes when you do models like this and you'll you'll make little errors and, and things it's about how we correct them and it's about making sure our painting style and how we're painting allows us to correct these errors so half the reason you know you use slightly watered down paint but for me anyway is that if you make a mistake it's a lot easier to fix than if you're going straight from the pot and slapping it straight on your model do you know what i mean um so sometimes my painting style and how i paint things in many ways is about mitigating the risk to any mistakes you're going to make later so um this technique definitely helps with that but once you're happy uh, you know you can do as many layers of this black as you want on there and build it all gradually and, and get whatever effect um that you like but for me a uh, couple of layers of this is is absolutely fine and, and sort of give the effect that we're wanting now why have i started below the waist uh, before going above the waist and why haven't i just done the line straight from the bottom of his clothing straight up to his head well look it's about realism when you put uh, a dressing gown on effectively which is what this guy's wearing and it's striped you don't see every single stripe on the dressing gown from your head to your toes you don't because your waist is generally thinner 
then, then your legs and your thighs and things and then your torso widens out again so these stripes will be squished will fade will um, move around so I've started off on the waist to uh, below the waist to establish the lines that I want and I'm happy with and then when you go above I'm going to represent where those lines have gone there's no way you could paint every single line but above the waist I've started off and just done a line at either side starting off the cloak because you know that's where it is and then there's sort of two extra lines uh, two extra black lines that would appear from um, probably the neckline into his shoulder line look I'm just not going to draw in I'm just going to uh, because it's squished up you wouldn't see it what I am going to focus on is the visual impact around the back and around where the large areas of cloth are so you can see there on the arm I'm almost drawing in an L shape picking one of the larger lines that were were from the waist and then I've worked my way around the arm in the same fashion that we worked uh, around below the waist and you can see there on his left arm there's the second black stripe just kind of goes into nowhere and that's fine because it goes into where the cloth is clumped together and I've just painted under the arm black to represent where all those um, things will go so it's about impact it's about making the most effect uh, it's not about doing absolutely everything um 100 exact it's about what the eye is going to get drawn to for me anyway right so now we're working on an off-white color you see there i'm just mixing in some uh, thinner medium because i wanted the, the the white slightly uh, more watery than we're working on so the color we're painting on now looks bright white on the camera this is my point about before so now the what looked white before is now looking a bit gray because we've got some uh, brighter color on there now even this isn't off-white this is not a white color so we're working up in stages because now we will get the uh, shade from the spray paint which was the race bone color we'll get the mid-tone from the off-white we're putting on now um, and then we can put a white on to so just do some final highlighting later so that's the importance of doing that kind of you know three color um, technique especially important on the white and you'll see on the folds so on the, the left leg there you can still see a sort of grayish line where I'm not going to cover white across there because I want to leave some of the shades where the cloth is folding Okay, so now we're going to the colours. I've gone around the entire model and, and put the white in between the, the black stripes. And now we're going to work on the rest of the colours in the model. Now, I've already laid these out on the, the, the wet palette there. Um, I will put the description of all the colours that we've used in the description down below. So if you do want to use the same. But as ever, it's about what you want to use. This is just how I've done it. Um, look, you can take it as inspiration. But whatever colours you fancy using yourself, whatever techniques you want to do is great. Now, moving on to the hair. I want a blondy yellow final effect um, but leaping straight to that on the model again gives you the same issues we talked about so what i'm doing is i'm mixing the yellow in with the, the flat brown that we're going to do the leather with later 50 50 mix and a bit of thinner and then starting off a kind of uh, dirty blonde base coat on the model there so that's the beauty with um painting this kind of way and using a palette you can do those mixes quite easy on the palette and you know it saves you going out and buying half a dozen more paints that you, you might want to use so look feel brave mix paints up what you're gonna to have to do is wipe the palette down um, and start again if you mix a color you don't like so we've done the cloth in a bleach bone color so we're starting off there not the cloth the um, parchment so um, we're starting off the parchment with that color we'll do some work on there later and we're doing the metal in kind of gold looking it's actually a, a direct tribute armor from workshop there now you could do that silver if you wanted you could even paint it green or blue if you wanted um i've gone for a slightly uh, darker metal color because i think that contrasts well with the white that's already on there and the red and then just picking a, a blue color to do the gem in the center but again all these colors are completely optional do what you like i think the only thing that's probably not optional is having a red card because you know yeah, red cards look effective um but any anything you want to do if you do want to do you know bright colors for the leather effects whatever you know feel free knock yourself out these are just what um just what i've wanted to do now we're on to tricky part or tricky-ish part is doing the writing on the parchment so we're looking for representation we're not looking for pure writing we're looking for representing what he's done on that model we are at 28 mil scale you wouldn't expect to have chapter and verse written on there that you could actually see so i've taken the red again with a fine detail brush and i've drawn a little bit of what looks like a c and then with the black, uh, with the, you know, the actual writing we're looking at, again, paint's still quite watered down. And we're just tapping on in random areas, trying to keep the line straight, but leaving gaps in, you know, wiggling it up and down, just having a play. And you see me going back and correcting those. So the key parts to make it look 
uh, effective and look like writing for the distance on a small model is not straight lines and not all joined together because that's when it starts looking like, you know, like it looks like a straight line, it doesn't look realistic. So up and down, tap it on, leave gaps in between um, and you will get something that approximates writing and will look, you know, fairly effective on uh, a model. You know, if you want to get a big magnifying glass and, and do chapter and verse and write on it, you know, go ahead, knock yourself out. Um, but this looks fairly effective at the end, or I think so anyway, just to, to represent that. Um, if this was a bigger model with bigger scroll work and bigger, yes, you might want to put some writing on, but, you know, we're not in that world. So we've done the parchment. Now we're going to work on an ink stage. If you've watched my videos before, um, on certain models like the Orcs particularly, I've used a very dirty brown ink and done the entirety of the model because we wanted to pull all the tones down, darken them down, make them look battered and dirty because they're on the field getting mucky. Now the refs I think are slightly different because they're you know, off on the side, keeping clean, keeping order, and also it's an elf, so you know, elves like to be clean. Um, so we're doing a slightly different effect on here. We're not doing a one tone uh, ink shade right across the model. So with the feather, I'm going from a black ink um, and I'm trying not to touch the spine down the center because I want to keep that quite uh, pale looking. Now I suppose I could have done the feathers multiple colors. Now I was going to initially, I was going to go for like a, a, like a yellow color or some bright blue feathers, that kind of thing. But once I got the model done, I felt that it would detract from the, what I think is the highlight of the model, which is the black striping. So I thought if I went a bright colorful feather, it would pull your eye away from what I think is the feature. So I chose not to. Well, if you want to do you know, colored feathers, whatever, that's absolutely fine. I just wanted to keep this quite a muted um, palette with some areas of focus and, and not too many. So the black ink, um, we can use that on multiple parts of the model. We're not using it on the whole model, but we're doing the feather and we're going to do uh, the metallic areas and we're going to pick um, some other sections uh, later on with the inks and then move on to uh, different ink tones for different parts of the skin. What this will do is like any ink shade we've used before it will do the multi sort of three tone effect uh, across the model but using different inks gives different tones to different sections of the model and it pulls the eye to uh, different areas doesn't make the whole thing blend in. Now the whole thing blending in is something that I quite like to do when I'm doing um, entire armies but I think for a feature character like this um, having different visual references I think is fine I think it looks a bit too busy when you do it on an entire force but that's just my personal preference and my personal painting style so now we're on to a Reichland flesh shade um, quite a nice shade this one it's got a slightly pinky tone to it which obviously why it's you know, usable for flesh but it's also why I've put it across the red because I think it'll work quite nicely um, across the red as well because it has got slightly pinky to it but that's why you'll be careful I guess about putting certain shades on certain colors because if you put a slightly pinky hued um, wash onto something that are completely contrasting it you know could end up uh, affecting it in an, in an adverse way so whenever you're painting you've just got to be uh, prepared to experiment prepared to work out what works uh, what works and goes where so um, but I quite like the the tone effect on here so I've used it on on what you would call the warmer warmer tones um, in the model so your skin the hair uh, and the red it works quite well um, then I did have a play and thought once we'd got the flesh I was going to move on to use a different uh, wash across the parchment but actually once I'd uh, put this down onto the flesh I thought actually you know, this is going to work really quite nicely um, and I think it'll give some good good effects across the parchment so good for the flesh uh, and then I've also started painting it uh, across the parchment you can see at the stage I'm now I'm actually avoiding putting the parchment and I decide now do you know what yeah this is going to work so uh, we've put that uh, across all the parchment areas um, because again it's sort of a warm living kind of tone slightly pinky you can see it's slightly pinky on the on the bone there but what I have done that's uh, not on camera as well is I've then put a little bit of black wash um, over the parchment as well but into where the folds of the parchment are. So now at the stage you're going back over the colours, you can see all the colours are still on the, the wet palette. All the inks have had time to dry, I think about half an hour or so uh, for that to dry and we're now going back over uh, every colour. When we're doing this we're not putting again mountains of paint on and what we're not doing is we're not going uh, into all the recesses where we've put that shade work on there. We're staying uh, on the raised areas and going uh, back across 
so that we get the top colour on, on the highlighted areas. We've got the mid-tones where the wash will have covered a little bit but then flowed in and you've got the full dark tone into all the cracks. So now it's about going back through with all the colours you've used so far and dropping on those highlights. Uh, and look, this is quite quick and easy and you can mix up if you wanted to, mix up into the next um, tones and the next highlights to uh, start pulling it up even more. So we're now going back over uh, and working on the whites. So there's actually a pure white down there now, as you can tell on the wet palette, it's a bit messy, but um, I've actually put a pure white down onto the wet palette. And now we're going really on the very, very raised areas to bring those, those levels back up. So I've chosen to do that on the white. I've not done it on uh, the reds. You know, I've not started using a new color on the reds. I've just come back and used the old color to give that kind of third shade. But with the white, I wanted that to really pop. So now we're actually putting some very, very small sections of pure white uh, on there to give that three tone effect. And I think you can see there that, that you know, this is now standing out far more uh, than it was before. And that's one of the keys with the white. Like I said, the rest of the colors, pretty much we've just gone back over with what was there before. So not too long, an hour or so through the model. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's shown you something. Uh, if you want to see the base there, that's just uh, made it look at the, like the back of the board. So, and you've done a video there about how I've done my bases. So hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you get some value and uh, hope to see you next time.